What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, uh, back with Tony again. And Tony has another deck profile, the third one. This one's really cool. This one's Spellbook. I did Spellbook on the channel not too long ago. This is a little bit of a different take on Spellbook. Uh, actually, I'm just going to let Tony take over, but make sure to check out Tony. A link will be in the description. All right, Tony, go ahead. So a lot of these deck profiles, I'm kind of dumping on Aladdin because these are things I wanted to make, but we'll never find the time to. Uh, especially this one. Shocking enough, when you did your deck profile, it was very close to mine in a lot of ways. Yeah. I think there were a few minor differences that I will talk about, but realistically, the deck kind of works itself. And the deck works to itself purely because in the last ban list, they unbanned Spellbook of Judgment. This card's nuts. By far, this card, uh, people like to make the thing like, oh man, this card could come back, it's not powerful. No, this card is every bit as powerful as it was back in the day. Uh, for those who, once again, do not know what it does, this card says uh, for every spell you've activated this turn after this card is activated, you add a spell book on the end phase uh, equal to that number or up to that number, and that's a special summon a spellcaster from your deck. Uh, for those who play magic in any watchable community, this is basically Storm. You're giving Yu-Gi-Oh the ability to have Storm and then a payback mechanic for everything you've done this turn. Yeah. And that is crazy, and there arguably no other card even in this current format or any currently existing does the same thing. Yeah. And as a result of that, this card is crazy. What unfortunately has changed, however, is the power of the cards it searches. So Judgment has not gotten power craft. No. The but, other cards... Yeah, back in the day, a card like Spellbook of Secrets that searches for one card is crazy. It was like, wow, that's a consistency. And the three rotas, that's insane. Cards like this, like, oh, a pot of greed. Ooh, a copy of spell. Banish a card. Uh, get an immunity. Revival. Power. Uh, get two draws per turn. Those cards were all insane. In 2008. No, sorry. 2012. And, and now they're just... Every deck has them. Yeah. Like, you can't tell me a Rota... Like, if your Rota isn't, like, plusing you 100 right now, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same thing with something like this. If you're not drawing two already as it is, or, or like, these cards aren't nearly as powerful. And as a result, unfortunately, spellbooks still suck for that reason. Yeah. But they have access to a really cool card. Yeah. But one of the things I want to bring out is that one thing that was not present in 2012... 12? 12, 12. Maybe 12. Yeah. yeah, 2012. I think, I think so. Was the was the fact that we didn't have nearly as good of a spellcaster lineup. Yeah, spellcasters as a whole have gotten a lot better. We've gotten a lot more archetypes. We've gotten a lot more generic support. We've gotten a lot better spells in general. And because this fact work card works, uh, the fact that this card works off of any spell, yeah, means we can do a lot more nuttier things than we did back in the day. So uh, we're just gonna do this. This deck ball is gonna be probably the fastest, but it's the one that I think you'll. Um, I think it exemplifies just how good things have gotten. Okay. So, monsters. Uh, three spell book magician and prophecy. It searches on summon or one flip for some reason. Yeah. It searches for a spell book monster, uh, spell book spell trap. Yep. It is also a spell book card. So, in theory, a card like secrets, which searches for spell book cards, can search into this. So, it gets you into a monster. That's relevant because you sometimes need spell to do things. Yeah. Uh, then the, this is the only other spell uh, spellbook card we're playing. One playing, one prophecy destroyer. This card's really cool. All right. So this is something that you didn't. Uh, I didn't. That is one of the difference between your uh, profile My and mine. And yours, yeah. It's the idea that okay. So prophecy destroyer is a level six spellcaster that says, "While well, in the graveyard, you banish three spellbooks, bring it back from the graveyard." Yeah. It's not once per turn, and as a result, of that it's a continuously recurring body for twenty five hundred points of damage, and that itself I think is the most important part. It lets you run over things. Yep. It lets you have damage because at the end of the day, back in the day when you made Jalgen, you couldn't end the game and that's how you lost. Yeah. So, and it's a level six, which is going to come up later. Yes, this will be, this is relevant for that reason. And of course, we're playing the one Jalgen. You don't want to play more than one Jalgen because now that we have actual extenders and former spellcasters, this also turns your board off. However, this is the only anti uh, special summon card that also deals with existing threats because you can discard a card to nuke the field of special summon monsters. Yep. And we have ways of actually turning this off and then bringing it back online. Then, as you all probably know, we have a uh, dogmatic line. We have three, um, we have three ecclesia, one floor to lease. The ecclesia yeah. searches for pretty much dogmatic cards, specifically your dogmatic punishment. This is one of the benefits that the deck had before. Back in the day, you backed up a jargon with a uh, spell book of fate, and that was your removal. Now, if we can't get into the spell book of fate, we have punishment to do the same thing. Fantastic for that reason. We're playing the one floor to lead, not necessarily for two reasons. Uh, for first reason. It's a 2500 beater. Again, it just finishes the game faster. It's just something that you can do to end the game. Uh, two, however, it's also a free special summon. Sometimes you need two spellcasters to really get into some of your plays. Yep. And this is just one that you could drop. That also doesn't necessarily lock you into the extra deck, uh, like Ecclesia would. They're just more bodies. I think the deck, what it was missing for so long was just bodies, yeah. but now you have them. And then from there, we have three. Uh, we have the spell, uh, the Magician Soul Package you saw before. This is the one um, 
Illusion of Chaos and the three Magician Soul. Magician Soul obviously can send things like Ecclesi uh, Fleur de Lis as well as Illusion of Chaos. But, and this is where the synergy comes in, you can also send Prophecy to Store. That's really cool. That's a really cool interaction. And just by that alone, it gives you two free bodies, but it turns all your spell books that you most likely will burn after the first two turns into just free bodies. And then that lets you make things like Axe Code to end the game. Yeah. Simple as that. And also, uh, this is something I want to point out. Uh, people... Uh, don't sleep on this. The draw two really fix your hand. A lot of your spell books are hard once per turn. If you see them too much because you drew into some of them and Multiples. you didn't multiple, you burn them this way. It lets you turn dead spells into live ones, and that lets you keep the uh, spell train going. Yeah. Uh, going to spells. Uh, going to spells. Uh, three secrets. Search for any spellbook card. Uh, simple as that. Three uh, knowledge. This says send a spell book as an effect to draw two cards. It's very relevant. Uh, this is somewhat relevant because with a card like Spellbook and Masters, which says reveal a spellbook or you control a spellcaster, copy any spellbook card in your grave. It means if you copy knowledge, you still have to send a spellbook. Yeah. Uh, a little unfortunate there. And unfortunately, uh, by the way it works, you cannot send Masters copying knowledge yeah. for no the copy knowledge effect because it's itself. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's what it is. But Masters means that you get any second mileage out of these hard ones per turn spells. We have the one power this lets you pump up any spellcaster like in a uh, higher attack. If you cop with Masters, it's 4,000 attack. And if it runs over a monster, you grab a spellbook for every uh, time you apply that effect. It's kind of crazy. Uh, one, uh, Wisdom. This card actually is more important now because with Dark Ruler and Droplets around, this is your way to uh, protect your Jalgon from uh, cards that break your board. We have the one life. This card brings back any spellcaster. Uh, this is relevant because sometimes uh, knowledge can send any spellcaster as well. Uh, you can use it to send Jalgon to turn off Jalgon to make a bunch of monsters and then life it back. Yep. And that's extremely relevant. It also has some funky where you modulate levels, but never comes up. We have the two fate. This card arguably is still pretty crazy. You banish a number of spell books and apply effects based on the number you banish. One, you uh, set a monster. One, you bounce a spell or trap. Two, you set a monster, which is great because you can technically set... Um, you can set your opponent's monster, but you can also set Blue Boy to search on attack. That's what, yeah. And then three banishes and non-targeting banish. Yep. And that's just another way to protect the Jalgen. We have the one uh, spellbook, uh, the Grand Tower. Spellbook Tower. It just gets you additional cards. The additional draw really does matter, and it's a good way to grind your opponent. And of course, the one judgment. This is just the judgment. Another cool really interaction um, that people might not know is if you activate your knowledge, and then you activate one of your quick plays. So let's just say it's Wisdom in this case. You can then send the wisdom that was just activated for the draw two. Oh, so yeah. just a really cool interaction that There's, people don't know. It, it lets you, effect. It's yeah. not cost. It lets you get a lot of mileage out of it. I think uh, reasonably the reason why you're even playing three of this itself, you do need to see more cards. Yeah, yeah your deck has so many, I guess, quote unquote starters at this point. This is just another one of them that lets you kind of uh, dig deeper, dig deeper, and you yeah, need yeah. to dig deeper because you need to meet at least the three spellbook threshold to get your uh, board online. Yep, and shockingly. This is where the idea that the, uh, the game has improved uh, in terms of spellcasters really comes into play. Because we have cards like Three Nadir Servant, which are spells that can search into uh, a spellcaster to turn the spellcaster component online. But also let you send things like Garuda to draw cards and such. Going second, you can send Entis to pop cards. There's a lot of different situations yeah. where this card's good. Uh, then, of course, we have three uh, pre-preparation of rights. Uh, this card searches for your Illusion of Chaos, and Illusion of Chaos grabs you into Magician's Soul, which then dumps your uh, posture store and then turns your entire engine online. Hilariously enough, this is something I want to... Uh, where it gets really interesting. If you open multiple of these and you've already used this, it's fine. You can send it for your, mag your Illusion of Chaos, um, your Magician's Soul. Side note, this is something I want to. Uh, I forgot to mention about Illusion of Chaos. You can shuffle back bricks, and that's kind of relevant because you keep this in hand to get another uh, souls later on, but yeah. it puts back things you really didn't want, like the one Jalgen that you have to summon from deck. Yeah, that's a really cool thing about souls is it doesn't have to put itself back. Yeah, it puts back, it fixes some of the bricks in your deck. Yeah. Uh, then from there, we have two small worlds. This card, it took me a while to figure out, but uh, your entire deck spellcasters, but nothing, uh, nothing's related between this spellcaster and the next. You have a water spellcaster that's level two to a level four light spellcaster. None of their stats are the same. So you can really branch into any number of your spellcasters that way. Yeah. And that theoretically lets you, in some situations, just normal summon Jalgen. Yeah, I mean, never a bad thing to just summon a floodgate. Yeah. And then we have the one terraforming. Uh, that's for searching into the Grand Smoke Tower. It's another spell, and that's why it's relevant there. Uh, we have the one... Let me pull it out from the other deck list I was doing. Du, 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 du. The one uh, instant fusion. This is so that you could summon out a Millennium Eyes. It's a spellcaster, but it also lets you, like I guess, work against a few hand traps that still currently exist. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, I want to play more than this, purely because even though... 
you can some you can use his extenders. Uh, with the Dogmatica stuff, sometimes you actually do end up activating the Deer Serum first, then using your draw cards and draw into this, and it's dead. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And then one the Shadow Schism because because making Winda is fun. Yes, uh, Winda also a spellcaster, which shocking enough also turns on your deck. Uh, this goes back to the idea. Yeah, we we have a lot better spellcasters in the game at this point. Yeah, it's a lot more playable nowadays. Yeah. Uh, going into the extra deck here, uh, duh, duh, duh. Uh, we have, of course, the one Millennium Eyes. We have the one Winda. We knew this. Uh, you know these ones already. We have the one uh, Op Clone to get into the Schism to make the Winda. We have two, one Entis for the removal. We have two Titan Clad for um, we have the two Titan Clad to actually be sent off into your servant to actually search for any of our targets. Uh, side note: Theoretically, one of your options in this deck is also supposed to be a Garura. Uh, let me find that Garura. It's also a Garura as well. Uh, other options then, you actually have then have your X deck options. These are spell uh, fusions that you can play. Uh, obviously, the ratios can be modified here and there. You don't have to play two Titan Clad. And at the same time, you also don't actually have to play the Schism Engine, and that frees up space. Yeah. The Schism Engine is really good, though. Yeah. Uh, from there, however, we then have the one uh, Tribe Gabe, Fair Jeet, the Baron Blossom. So this... Uh, in the same way that you send the Garou will draw you a card, the only difference is this bottom's a card. And that is relevant at times when you need to put back cards that need to be in the deck. Like so, Dragon. Yeah. So in those scenarios, you use this card instead of that to dig one deeper, but also fix your bricks. Yep. Uh, the one Link Rebo, because you turn uh, souls into that, there's your X deck monster to turn on your Ecclesia. Um, the other one in uh, Artemis, this is the other card that lets you uh, turn any of your spellcasts uh, into Link. Turns your Blue Boy into a Link, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is also, weirdly enough, uh, speaking of the, going back to Link Rebo, though, uh, the reason why I make Link Rebo over this at certain points, uh, sometimes I still end on the Link Rebo, and now my opponent can't even run over the Jowgen. Oh, yeah, that's really relevant, actually. Yeah. That's very relevant. It's like, hey, now you're protecting your Jowgen with, let's say, something like Wisdom, so they can't, you know, Dark Ruler, Imperm, or whatever. And then you're also ending on Link Rebo, so, so they you can't, can't run over battle. So I don't even need the punishment immediately. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're like, and there was two Artemis there. Oh, two Artemis. Okay. Uh, we have the one Lina. It's a spellcaster light that we can make and also search into our uh, Dogmatica package. Synergy, baby. Uh, this, the Crowley, this card is fantastic. On summon, you reveal three spellcast, uh, spell books at different names. Your opponent picks one. At this point, it actually, a lot of times, it does not matter which one you get. Because at the end of the day, you just got an extra spell book, and that gets you one extra spell activation. Yep. Uh, it also means you can normal summon spellcasters at high level spellcasters without tributing. Which, at some point when I was testing the deck, I did normal summon Florida Lease without tributing. And just That's interesting. Interesting. Beat my opponent without having to get rid of the Javelin Lock. Kind of useful there. Uh, the one Selene. This card is... Not it's easy. getting reprinted too, so don't worry. It's not expensive. Yeah, so this card is... The, the, this is part of the reason I think I've been waiting. It's like, I didn't want to do a profile with Selene. It's like, yeah, this card's $70. Have fun finding it. Yeah, no. Uh, one of the things you can do is obviously, if you made it with uh, Millennium Edge, you can bring back the Money Eyes for a disruption. But more than likely, you'll just be using this to make access code at the end of the game. Yep. And it's shockingly easy to go into access code from Selene, purely because with Prophecy Destroyer, on that following turn, after you Jowgen lock them for that first turn, you just bring back the Prophecy Destroyer and start like linking away your field, bring back the Prophecy Destroyer over and over again to continuously make the link climb. And once you hit this, you can do, like, you could either use it to then make, uh, bring back the Jowgen itself, or you'd make an access code special for the lead, and there's the AK, uh, AK worth of damage. Yeah, so this this deck, funny enough, when it gets going, it, it gets going. It has to roll a little bit, you know? You have to get this, the Judgment. But once you get to the Judgment, you can live one turn on the Jowgen. You can just go in. And like, one of those things I want to point out, like, it, this deck is not inherently reliant on Judgment, but Judgment makes this actually kind of worthwhile. Yeah, it's because it gives you a way into that Jowgen. Yeah. But there have been games where I've drawn into all my pieces and just dug hard enough where it's not hard to see at least something to get you into your place. Yeah. You don't... And that's something I think, like... I feel like it's made the deck better. Back in the day, I think for those who've played in that format, you didn't just need to open Judgment. You need to open Judgment and then the line. Yeah. And that's shocking enough, that's part of the reason why currently when people test Dragon Rulers, they realize Spellbook was not the best matchup against Dragon Rulers who just could see anything. You needed specific things or slightly more specific things. And now all this new Spellbook cast support kind of makes it so you don't have to open just You have the so line. much crazy draw power. I mean, you have Souls. Yeah, you, you have, have souls, the Ecclesia. knowledge, which is relatively new because they didn't have that. I'm pretty sure in 2012. No, you have the knowledge, which is draw. You have all these spells. Small will get you into any of the spell cards you need to start the engine. But at the end of the day, you get into your pieces a lot better, and it doesn't necessarily have to be specific pieces. Yep. And that's what makes this deck weirdly, even arguably this format, a little good. Uh, there are games where I did not actually have to activate a monster effect, which means my opponent doesn't Ashizu me immediately. Yep. And that kind of is good because once I summon the Jowgen, it doesn't matter what Ashizu card you have. It doesn't, yeah, it literally does not. You'd, you'd have to literally mill something to get rid of this with protection that I backed up, and that's fine, because this card kind of also is just 
uh, it's just a butt to deal with. You can't super poly it away. You're going to have to break board break it. But that's where wisdom and cards like that come in. And that makes this deck still somewhat viable even in this format. Granted, the problem with this deck at the end of the day is you have to go first. Yeah, it's still a rogue tier deck, guys. You have to win, you have to win the die roll. And that's yeah. something, especially in a format where... the And the worst part is, if they resolve this season card and mill your judgment, I guess you... Oh, yeah, then you're stuck. Yeah. So, again, all these decks I've... like In, in the series of videos, whichever order it is, you see these videos... They're kind of going to work the same way. They're fun decks to play uh, if you just don't want to deal with the Shizu. Because let's face it, this format... It's not that enjoyable, let's be honest. All right, but Tony, thank you so much for the deck profile, for all the deck profiles. There's, there's one over there. I don't even know where the other ones is. But we have a lot of them here. Uh, oh, there's, there they are. So we got Gaudi, we got Spellbook, and we have uh, Labyrinth, which I think you guys might be seeing this one last. So if you guys didn't check out these videos, make sure to check them out. Link will be in the description. You guys can check them out on my channel. You guys can also check them out on Tony's channel. Make I sure don't upload a lot, out. but I upload when I can. Yeah, and he does it more in-depth than he does on these on this channel. So if you guys want a more in-depth, more, uh, I guess, uh, what, what's another word for in-depth, I guess? Detailed. Detailed, there you go. Uh, I basically said the same thing. But, yeah, if you guys want a more detailed version, check it out on Tony's channel. Thank you, Tony, for being here. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, Spanko and Tony. Peace.